Hello Bubble Crafts enthusiasts and welcome to our series on Bubble Crafts Tracker Analyzer. What we'll be doing is having a few episodes on how to use the actual Bubble Crafts Tracker program and see if they can help you save a few dollars while you're playing this fun game. When you first enter the screen, copy your mobile device, you'll be displayed with this particular screen, which is just a disclaimer and uh, kind of lets you know that the development team is in no way responsible for any losses that you may incur while using this to play the game. It's really just here for your entertainment and allows you to be able to track the rolls of dice and hopefully help you make uh, decisions that will keep your bankroll intact. Anyway, if you uh, click on the cancel button located right here on the left, it will just send you back out and nothing will be displayed except for the ability for you to go back to your regular mobile applications. If you choose to accept, after reading the little agreement here, you'll be displayed with a little log on info that says enter the dice combinations as displayed on the game. Uh, currently this is designed more or less for the Azure Shirt to Win version of Bubblecrest, but it can be used on pretty much any electronic uh, game. When a uh, dice roll occurs on the bubble craft machine, you will be given the two dice settings. It will be a combination of the two numbers, one followed by the second. Let's use, for example, that the numbers that were rolled were a four and a two. So I would just, in this little box up here, enter a four, followed by a two. I press my enter key. Voila, here we have our display four and two, a high number being display first, the bottom number below it for a total of a six. This can repeat over and over. We'll throw a few more in there. We'll go a five, three. We'll do a one, three. How about a card six being a three, three? As you can see, everything displays from right to left and the rest our stats as we move along. Well, although it happened here that we got our point, even though we've been paying attention to it, you'll notice that the puck is now off. So let's go ahead and add one more, a two and a three, four, a five. You now see the puck states that it's on, and our point is a five. Uh, out of curiosity, you may notice that this window pops up and goes away. I'll put another number in here. We'll put a two and a one, or a three, and you'll notice this combo occurrence is for a three. What that is for, it just lets you know how many times a seven has followed this particular combination of two and one. If I go back down here and take a look at it, uh, we'll see after two and a one, I've had zero sevens for one time rolled. This really doesn't do much for you at the very beginning, but after you get to about 50, 60 rolls, it seems to kind of develop a nice little pattern for you. Okay, two things that you do need to be aware of from the very beginning. One is that you need to have about 50, 60 rolls in here before this does much. So, uh, what you might want to do when you first arrive at a table is go ahead and just put all the numbers from the screen directly in the program. All right, to do that, let me just go ahead and throw a few numbers up here. Uh, since I'm in a testing mode, I'm going to let this go through. And if you kind of notice right now, since this is up, up here, it's counting the number of rolls that I've had. And once it breaks the 50, we now have this little display on the far right. Okay, what that is for is the following. All right. What it's telling me, after the number of 8, which was rolled, we had a 5-3 come up for an 8. You see it says after 8. I've had four 11s come up, two 10s, one additional 8, a 7, a 6, one 5, no 9s, no 4s, 0 3s, 0 2s, and 0 12s. And I can check these rolls along the way. Let's say I want to see what came after a 6. If I come over here to my 6s, you'll see that on the far left here where the six is rolled. I've had five of them. After six, I've had a nine, a seven, a six, and so forth. Okay, you can kind of hit, just kind of click on all of these, and you'll notice that it changes accordingly. On the bottom here, this is kind of a neat little thing. This is one of the reasons that the program was originally developed. We were kind of testing to see uh, after a number rolled, you know, how many times the seven came up. I mean, if you've ever played, whether it's a live game or a bubble crafts version. You ever sit there and go, gosh, the last time a hill came up, it was followed by a seven or it was followed by a hard ten. Well, this kind of tracks the numbers 
follow, the seven follows. So a seven out follows these particular combinations. Right now, let's take a look at the five here because it seems to be the most. We've had one for one and a four one. So what it's saying is we've had one seven out followed by a four one combination. Here on a two three, I've had one seven out for two of the two threes. Okay, on the three two and on the one four, I've had a total of six combinations but no seven outs. Now one thing you've got to be very careful with here, this is a seven out. This is not a frontline winner, okay, so a come out step, but on a seven out. And that's what we're kind of concerned with. We're worried about losing the money. It's great when you're making money, but you don't want to lose any money. Uh-huh. Let me go ahead and type no right here for the moment. I'll have to explain what that window was for in a moment. All right, let's continue our game here. And let's go ahead just for the heck of it. I'm going to cancel out of this. And I am going to go ahead and place in here a 1-6 for a 7 out. Okay, 1-6 for a 7 out. Watch the bottom down here. So the last number was a 5-3, which is an 8. So this number here is going to change. Okay, it should go bingo. And it went from 1 to a 2. All right, 